So, Inji, coming to you first, it's a very strong statement coming in from the Indian Army. They have foiled this bid in Uri. But the kind of statement that has been made, that there was some kind of support these terrorists were getting from a Pakistani post, and there was trouble in retrieving the body that, because there was firing that was happening in favor of the terrorists, is, is a big major development. Should India be worried? Well, good evening, Anusha. Good evening, everybody. What we are witnessing today is the residue of decades of an obnoxious legacy of Pakistan-sponsored terrorism enabled by local support and, you know, enabled by uh, political brokers like the Abdullah family and the Mukti family. Now, in the last three years, in the last four years after the abrogation of Article 370, Kashmir has gone through a sea change. There is no local support for these terrorists and, uh, you know, people like the Abdullahs or Meh and Meh Mehbooba Muftis are politically redundant. So, you know, yes, this is a last attempt by Pakistan to revive the problem, to revive its uh, its terrorist activities. But I think we are equally abreast. We are aware of the problem. And also, there's another thing which has happened. If you see the geopolitical developments, India's new access with the Middle East, with Saudi Arabia, all of that has led to an, an ostr ostracization of Pakistan globally. So Pakistan, we are aware, would be trying to do something to, you know, to to uh, get back to its old ways of, uh, you know, creating problems for us. But we are fully prepared. And I have been hearing, I have heard out uh, General Dillon and I have been following uh, what other security experts have said. Yeah. I think it was just a bad day three days ago, uh, which could happen to any professional. But uh, things are completely under control. Yes, every terror act act of this kind takes us back by a few months but we are completely aware of the problem abreast of the problem and we things are completely under control but mr sinha i i'm not one of those people who argue that you know just because you did away with the special status of jammu and kashmir there has to be a quick bandage to the wound or a quick solution that can be found to a decades old problem or a problem that has existed ever since india became independent but it was with a huge promise that the special status was done away with it was said that in the next couple of years things would be better in the valley and your political opponents argue that the government has not delivered on its promises. The instances of violence may have come down, but they have not significantly come down to the extent that the government had promised to the people. See, if you go purely by data, the incidents of violence, the incidents of terror activities are down by nearly 70%. I think seven years ago, there would be some 5,000 uh, uh, terrorists in the valley. And this is something which, like I say, I, I don't... Uh, I go by what security experts say. Hmm. Today, there are barely 100 left and, you know, all of them are struggling for the survival. Hmm. So, you know, the nature of terrorism has definitely changed. Today, we have a hybrid model of terror where you can't okay. identify many of these terrorists easily. Hmm. Today, they are going for guerrilla warfare. But like I said, if you, these are, this, these only point towards them being a residue of the problem. You know, between 2006 and 2008, India used to have terror blasts across the country almost on an average every 35 days. Today, mm -hmm. that has mm -hmm. become history. Okay. So I think it's a matter of time before all of these terrorists are eliminated, before pa Pakistan is further ostracized to a level where it doesn't have any option but to change its ways.